All right. So, uh, well, the first part of uh, looking at forces is that we're going to deal with uh, mass versus weight. Now, they kind of, in real life, uh, non-physics class life, uh, they're often, those words are used, you know, as the same thing. What's your weight? Uh, well, mass you might hear in the gym, uh, but in physics, they're actually different. And uh, mass is the quantity of matter in an object. So if the amount of matter in an object remains the same, the object's mass stays the same. And our units here, the key thing are, is we're in kilograms. Now, weight is the force, and this is where forces come in, the force of gravity on an object. And so Fg, the force of gravity, is equal to m times g, where g is 9.8 meters per second squared down on Earth. All right, so whatever your mass is, you times it by 9.8, uh, and that is what your weight would be on Earth. Now, the interesting thing is that G value changes uh, depending on what planet you might be on. So, for instance, uh, the moon, oh, that's big letters, the moon, uh, it has a G value of 1.62. So, what happens is is that even though you go to the moon, your mass does not change because the amount of uh, matter in you does not change, but your weight changes on the moon. And so you're, if you were on the moon and you've seen highlights of this, I think at some point, people bounced around because in fact they are way, they weigh way less, almost uh, one fifth, 20%. So uh, roughly every hundred pounds, you're only gonna weigh 20 pounds. So somebody who's 200 pounds, uh, can jump around the moon feeling like they are uh, just 40 pounds. Now, what happens with the G value is it depends on the size and the mass of the planet. And so the moon's a lot smaller than Earth, even though it's made out of the same stuff. It's a lot smaller, and that's why its G value is smaller. On the flip side, the biggest planet, which we can't go on, but just uh, on saying that, uh, imagining that we could, it has a G value of 24.92. And so that means it's almost three times the size of Earth, uh, the G value. And so if you were to step onto Jupiter and you're, a, say, a 200-pound person, it would feel like you are 600 pounds. So that would uh, be a lot harder to walk and run. Now, here's something interesting how this works out in physics and, and in terms of astronauts. Now, this is a bit of an exaggeration. But your spine is kind of like this. It's, your spine is like an S shape. And so when astronauts go out in space and have no gravity acting on them, or they're on the moon, what happens is their spine unwinds a little bit. So what happens, and this would be a good thing for me, is you get taller. So people who come back from uh, being in outer space for an extended period of time, it has a lot of effects on the body, some of them not good, but one of them is, you end up being taller. Now, after a couple of weeks, the 9.8 works on you, and then you shrink back down to your original size. But astronauts do come back taller. All right, so that's just a little thing about G values. Now, if a person, example one here, uh, has a mass of 75 kilograms, find their weight. Well, to find their weight, what, again, we're looking at is the force of gravity, and that is just going to be your mass times that G value on Earth. And we're not talking about the moon here, we're talking about Earth, all right? And so our mass of this person would be 75 kilograms. Our G value here is 9.8. And so if I multiply those two numbers, let me see, get my calculator out here, I get 735. And because we're dealing with forces, we're talking about Newtons, all right? So that's just a little bit. So the mass is 75 but yet the weight is 735 newtons. So there's a difference uh, in physics. Now, uh, a 780 kilogram uh, a car, which is 780 kilograms, is stalled in a parking lot. Space uh, is being pushed unsuccessfully uh, with a force of 150 newtons. Draw at FBD, which hopefully at this point, because of this morning you had a chance to look, that is a free body diagram is what FBD stands for, representing the situation. All right, now, we're in my wheelhouse with uh, 
free body diagrams because I always draw them just simply as a block. And I always put the mass inside the block. So this is 780 kilograms. All right, now in terms of a free body diagram, this car is being pushed unsuccessfully. There we go. So I'm going to call this F of A. That is called the applied force, which is 150 newtons. Now, this car is not moving. And the reason for that is that friction will not allow it to, it's too heavy and uh, the tires are gripping the road too much. So this would be our force of friction. Now, because this thing isn't moving, that means the force of friction is also 150 newtons. They balance each other true. out. Sure, go ahead. How come how come the friction's like pulling away? And like the always the does. Are, huh? Friction always works against you. Friction oh, okay. never helps you. Because I thought that yeah, like, the air would be going towards it because like they're pushing it. So no, great question. Because we are going to talk about more about friction in the next class. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, friction always works against you, never for you. Okay. Which okay. sucks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, friction never helps you out. Never helps you out. Now, uh, what else we got here on this free body diagram? Uh, it's on the road, so everything is affected by gravity. So there's our FG. All right. Now, here's something else that's new is that when anything is laying on top of something or it's sitting on top of something, like a car sitting on the road, the force of gravity pushes down. But guess what? The road bites back and pushes up with what's called the normal force, all right, which we call FN. Now, we get to B and it says, what is the value of Fn? Now, here's something is that because this car is on the road and it's not going up into the air, that would be crazy, or the car is not going down into the road, that means our Fn is equal to our Fg. They are balanced because, again, this car is not flying up into the air or it's not drive going down to the ground. And so the value of our normal force is going to be the weight of the car, which again is equal to N times G. Now this time our mass is huge, 780 kilograms. All right, and again, because we're on Earth, 9.8 is our G value. And so uh, I take 780 and I times it by 9.8. Uh, let's see here. Get the calculator out. Oh, round number again. I get 7,644. And again, we're going to talk about this more in a little bit, but force is always measured in Newtons, named after Sir Isaac Newton. All right. Uh, last one. Is there balanced or unbalanced forces acting on the car? Well, I think I've kind of already uh, mentioned this that. FG and FN are equal because the car is not flying into the ground and it's not flying up into the sky. Because when you have unbalanced forces, things move. All right. And the same thing with the car, it's stalled. So we're applying the force. And as we I just mentioned, friction's working against you. They're balancing each other out. And so in this case, uh, is there balanced or unbalanced forces? Uh, yeah, they're balanced. Uh, because uh, the car is uh, not moving horizontally, left or right, or vertically, up or down. And so that means our, that we have some balanced forces. All right, now, speaking of forces, because I talked about Newton's, uh, we're going to get into Newton's laws here. We're going to get into his first law anyways. Got three of them. All right, so law of forces. Now, here's what a force is all about. How it's a, and again, this hopefully you, you picked up on this reading it, but again, I'm going to define it. Uh, is a force is just a push or a pull. And it's measured in Newtons, again, named after Sir Isaac Newton. 
And uh, one Newton is the force required to accelerate one kilogram of mass at a rate of one meters per second. I see a hand raised. Yeah, are we not doing example three and four for the other one or no? Uh, example three or four. Uh, there is an example three or four, but there is an example three and four for this one. Okay. Okay. So I think you're just looking at the, you get your sheets mixed up. How's that? Possibly. All right. So again, uh, one Newton is the force required to accelerate uh, one kilogram of mass at a rate of one meters per second. Uh, now, just making sure. Now, there's this word, fancy word called inertia. It's the property of matter that causes uh, it to resist changes in motion. So essentially, if something's moving, it doesn't want to stop. And if something stopped, it doesn't want to move. And so uh, Newton's first law kind of says that in a little bit fancier words, is that uh, if there is no net force, so in other words, everything's balanced, uh, acting on an object, uh, the object will remain uh, at rest. So in other words, if it's stopped, it wants to stay stopped, or it will or will uh, keep moving at a constant velocity there we go so again if something's moving at a certain certain uh, speed it's going to want to stay that speed if something stopped which is a i guess it is a constant speed of zero it wants to stay like that now uh, a couple of examples is that uh much like our car here uh pushing a large very large rock and it doesn't move well, that's a case where, uh, just like our car, your uh, applied force, Fa, uh, is less than friction, which I'll, uh, let's see here, throw a little F, F of little F. Right, so every object has friction. And again, we're going to talk about friction more, but it's basically based on what two surfaces are in contact with each other and how much that object weighs. Right, if something is very light, uh, you're able to move it because the friction is probably very low. Uh, and at the same th same incident, if you have a very heavy object, and say it's got sandpaper on the bottom of it of, of the object, and you're pushing it through mud. Uh, there's going to be a lot of friction there, so you're probably not going to be able to move the things. All right, so again, we'll talk about friction uh, next week. Now, uh, that is when something's at rest and it doesn't want to move. Now, here's something else that uh, you kind of inherently know, is if a car hits the brakes really hard, you don't have your seat, well, hopefully you have your seatbelt on, uh, the people in, this, in inside the car keep moving forward. So... That's why it's uh, good to have your seatbelt on because you don't want to eat the steering wheel or eat the dash or the window. And because what happens here is it, the body uh, of the person following Newton's first law because it wants to uh, remain at the same velocity. So even though the car's stopping, the person doesn't want to stop. And that's, again, why we got to wear our seatbelts. All right, so you don't eat the dashboard. All right, uh, what else we got here? Oh, example three. So maybe this is the example three you were talking about, hopefully. All right, so uh, example three, if a book has a mass of a 1.5 kilograms, which is about three pounds, somewhere there, what upward force must be applied to hold the book stationary? All right, to just hold it there. So again, I'm going to draw a little diagram here for you. All right, so we have a book. Again, free body diagram, I just draw a block. Don't need anything fancy here. I put the mass in there. Now, with this book is that no matter what, everything is subject to the force of gravity, Fg. All right, now, when this, I can actually figure out the force of gravity, right? Because again, it's mass times G which in this case is going to be 1.5, that's our mass in kilograms there, 
And of course, our G value, we're on Earth, same thing, 9.8. Now, if I multiply those numbers, uh, let's see here, I get decimals again, 14.7. And again, the units are Newtons. Now, here's the thing. Here's the key words here. Stationary. It's at rest. It's not moving, which means we got to have balanced forces. All right. And so my applied force, because I'm just looking at vertically here, up and down, this book ain't moving. That means F of A has to equal my force of gravity, which we already figured out down here is 14. 0.7 newtons. All right. Now, what happens? Uh, what is the net force if a 25 newton up force is applied? All right. Well, again, I'm going to draw a little diagram here. Of what's going on? Again, with my nice blocks. There's our book. All right. We have a 1.5 newton force. We already figured out here that the force of gravity for this book, right, is 14.7. Now, we're applying a force. Change it up. This book's, uh, well, we'll get to what it's going to happen to this book, but there isn't a force applied to it of 25 newtons. So what we want is the net force. What's going on? Well, in this case, my net force... I got 25 newtons up. So I'm going to put a positive 25 because I always look at up as being positive. But I'm going to subtract 14.7 because we got gravity's moving down. Now, if I take those two numbers and I subtract them, I end up with 10.3 newtons. And because the, the for applied force going up is the big one, direction of this force is up so in this situation the forces are not balanced they're unbalanced which means this book is going to move because we don't have the forces counteracting each other so it's going to move all right uh let's see what else we got here example four all right uh the, uh, the diagram uh, shows an object that is moving at a constant velocity. Keywords here. So it's not speeding up and it's not, uh, it's not slowing down. So this is a nice way of saying your net force, we got a balance here. So there's two times you got balanced forces if you're moving at a constant velocity or, well, I guess if you're stopped, which is also a constant velocity. But this is saying your net force are balanced, which means zero. All right. So really what I could look at here is if I want to find the mass of the object, well, I'm going to have to find this Fg first. All right. And so what I'm looking at here is that my net force is equal to, I got F1. Net forces means you're adding up all the forces here. So I got F1 uh, plus F2 plus Fg. All right, now, again, because it's a constant velocity, I know that this thing uh, has a net force of zero. Now, F1, it's moving up. So I'm going to put a positive 10. F2 is up. So I'm going to put a positive 18. Then guess what I got here? Fg is down. So I'm going to go with a minus Fg. Whatever it is, I'm going to have to subtract it. Here's what I'm going to do now, a little math. I'm going to move this minus Fg over to the other side here. And when things go on the opposite sign of an equal sign, they change signs. So this minus Fg becomes a positive Fg. And then I can put my other numbers together here. I got my 10 and my 18. 10 plus 18, well, that's 28. Now, here's what we're looking for, mass, right? This is weight. Fg is equal to weight, but guess what? I know that, here, what am I going to put it there? Therefore, I guess. Then I know this 28 newtons is going to be equal to mg, right? Because that's our weight. So we're kind of working re reverse. Before, we always found the weight. 
Now uh, I'm gonna, I've got the weight, I'm gonna find the mass. All right, now I got 28 is equal to mass times, well, your G value is still 9.8, that ain't changing. All right, and now I got a little math equation here where I'm solving for M. And so the only way to get rid of that 9.8 and get M by itself is to divide by 9.8 on both sides here. And so those 9.8s divide each other out. And so what I'm going to get my mass here on the other side, and it is going to be whatever 28 uh, divided by 9.8 is. Uh, let me see here. Get the calculator out. Uh, going, gang, I got to go to two. I'm going to two decimal places always here. Uh, 2.86 kilograms. And there's our mass. So again, we had to work in reverse there again. So that's kind of putting everything together where we're looking at our uh, balance forces because again, we have a constant velocity and then uh, finding the weight from that, which is the force of gravity. And then uh, from the weight, finding the mass. All right, uh, what else we got here? Ah, okay. Now this is something we just kind of covered is that if all the forces, force arrows or forces, same thing, are added together, it's called the, the net force. All right. Uh, now, so for instance, a car uses a force of 2,000 newtons east to move uh, and experiences a force of friction west, 180 newtons west, because again, friction is always working against you, and wind resistance of 20 newtons west. Find your F net. All right, now again, we got two different directions here. I got east and I got west. I'm going to make east a positive number. All right, because they're the opposite directions here, and I'm going to go with west is negative. So here's what happens when I'm finding out my net force. I'm going to add all these guys together. So I'm going to take my 2,000 newtons east. Whoops. Go with east. All right, plus, that's essentially what you're doing. You're adding up these forces, but again, when you get directions, that's when the signs change. All right, so I'm going to add up that 180 newtons west. Uh, plus 20 uh, newtons west. All right, now here's where things change. Now I'm going to account for direction here when I'm finding my net force. I said east is positive, so that's a positive 2,000. But the 180 newtons west, minus 180, opposite direction. Same thing with the 20 here, so it's going to be a minus 20. So now when I find my net force, I got 2,000. Uh, I subtract 180, subtract 20. I'm going to get 1,800, all right, or 1,800. Now, again, the units are newtons, but guess what? I got a positive number. That's telling me my direction here is east. There we go. All right, so you've got to include direction. Got to include direction. But again, when I'm adding these up, I make one direction positive, the other negative. All right, uh, last one, good old number six here. If an object, we got a bunch of forces here, four of them here, uh, has the following forces acting on it. F1 is 50 newtons up, F2 is 50 newtons down, F3 is 100 newtons right, and F4 is uh, 80 newtons left. Find F net. Now, here's one thing, is I see F1 and F2, 50 newtons up, 50 newtons down. They're just canceling each other out. I don't even have to include these guys because they they cancel yeah they cancel each other out and so now when i'm finding the f net uh all i'm worried about is right and left here so i always make right positive and uh left negative all right so now again finding f net i didn't have to worry about f1 and f2 because again as i said they cancel each other out here so i'm gonna add up f3 uh, plus f4 are two forces that uh, are gonna are not balancing each other out and so uh, because I said uh, f3 here is 100 newtons right I got a positive number for that but f4 here is 80 newtons left so I'm gonna go down with an 80 negative there and again when I calculate 100 minus 80 I get 20 my units are newtons and now I'm down to my final answer here because that's a positive 20 I know the direction is to the right and there we go 
All right, so again, looking at uh, calculating your net forces, you got to make one direction positive, one negative. Uh, when we have balanced forces, again, that's when we have our constant velocity, which also can mean you're not moving at all. Uh, that's a constant velocity. 